Chapter 27 After the ceremony, most of the guests headed over to the building where the reception was being held, leaving the wedding party and families to pose for pictures before joining them. Much of the reception was a blur of faces, scents, and loud music. I only remember that the party was still going strong when I started falling asleep in my chair. Devin noticed and prompted Mom to finish with us so we could go. After I threw the bouquet, they pulled out a chair and had me sit while they gathered all the unmarried men. Devin knelt in front of me and made a big production of lifting the see-through lace skirt until the garter around my left thigh was exposed, not that it hadn't been visible before, but now it was completely bare. I glanced at the crowd whose complete attention was on us, before the heat of Devin's hand on my leg drew my attention back to him. Look at me and not them, he spoke into my mind. His eyes locked on mine as one of his hands found the zipper tab on the back of my knee and eased it down, and then he tugged the boot off my leg and foot, setting it beside my chair. He slipped one finger beneath the elastic band and played it back and forth beneath my skin, sliding the bit of satin and lace down to my knee. This is just a taste, his voice whispered through my mind, later I'm going to take my time and strip you piece by piece. He inched the garter down my leg, drawing out the tension before slipping it off my foot. He stood, holding his trophy high, as if he had battled long and hard to win it, while the men and boys gathered to catch it hooting and whistling. Devin hooked it with one finger and shot it, much like a rubber band, in a high arc over the group, and we all watched to see who would catch it. Cameron came out the winner, his long arms reaching high and snatching it out of the air before anyone else had a chance. Grinning, Devin helped me put my boot back on while Mom handed something out to the guests, arranged to have the car brought close, and gathered people to see us off. When the time was right, Devin and I made our way down the narrow pathway that formed in the crowd, through the showered bird seed, to my car, which Devin had brought so I wouldn't have to climb into his truck while wearing a dress. We pulled into the driveway at home, and Devin shut off the engine. We sat in the quiet car for a moment, before I turned to him. Are you ready for our first night as husband and wife? I asked in a teasing tone. I don't know why, but I'm nervous. He gave me a wry smile. I smiled back. Me too. His smile widened. Come on, let's go. We made our way to the door, hand in hand, stopping just outside. He swung me up into his arms and used the hand behind my back to twist the doorknob and shove the door open before carrying me over the threshold and then setting me on my feet in the living room. I froze. Do you smell that? I was suddenly scared. Devon paused, scenting the air. Out to the car now. He rushed me back out the door, followed me to the car, and handed me his PCD, since Gabriel still had mine along with my purse. Go, get away from here. As soon as you're clear, call Bill, tell him. Okay. I got behind the wheel, pulling out of the driveway, I headed for the nearest convenience store, somewhere there would be light and witnesses, should anything happen. As soon as I parked the car, I dialed the Anikidos. Devin? Concern was apparent in Bill's voice, even over the noise of the reception still going on around him. It's me. I was still slightly panicked. He's here. Nikki. Bill seemed confused. Who's where? Brandon, he's in our house. Get out of there now. I did. Devin made me leave. He stayed there. Good. Hang on a sec. I waited. Sound on the other end muffled, as if he'd covered the mouthpiece. Are you still there? he asked again. I am. I've sent help to the house. Where are you? I gave him my location, and he told me someone would be there soon and disconnected. I sat in the car, worrying, waiting for someone to come. I wondered why Brandon had come back, what he wanted now. I knew Devin could beat Brandon in a fair fight, but Brandon hasn't done anything fair so far, and I doubted he was going to start now. I was startled from my brooding by a knock on the glass. I jumped and looked around, my heart thundering in my ears. Gavin was bent down, looking in the passenger's window, waiting for me to let him in. 
I hit the lock and he got in, sitting in the seat as he closed the door and relocked it. Are you all right? I nodded, shaken but fine. I smelled him as soon as we got inside. Devin didn't wait to see if he was still there, he just had me leave and told me to call Bill. Good move, make sure you're safe first, then check things out. Do you think he was still there? I don't know. I wasn't in the house but a few seconds. All I know for sure is that he had been there. I jumped when the PCD in my lap chirped. Picking it up, I found a message from Bill. Coast clear, we can go back. I turned to Gavin. Do you need to get your car? No, I caught a ride with Gabriel. He dropped me off. Good. I started the car and drove us to the house. Gavin stayed with me as I went inside, just in case there was someone lurking in the dark waiting to get me alone. I didn't think Brandon would be stupid enough to hang around with so many enforcers around, but I'd hate to be wrong. Inside, we found everyone gathered in the living room. As I stepped inside, Devin made his way to me and pulled me close to him. I wrapped my arms around him and let him hold me. The feel of him against me and his scent surrounding me calmed my frayed nerves. He was gone when we got here, but I'm sure Weston or Troy has told him we're after him. Devin's voice was low, just for me. He broke the lock on the guest room door and he destroyed our bed. I groaned, dreading cleaning up the mess before we could sleep. You're not staying here tonight, Bill said, drawing my attention. I've already called and made arrangements. You have a room at the Sheraton. You don't have to do that. I felt guilty that he'd already called. Yes, I do. I don't want to have to worry about you if he comes back here tonight. I want a man here tonight and two at the hotel. He looked at Devon, making sure he was understood. I've already packed a bag, we can leave when you're ready, Devon said. I nodded against his chest, still stunned that Brandon had broken into our home. I could only be glad that no one had been here and no one had gotten hurt. I'm ready when you are. I stayed close to Devon. Devon looked around the room, at the men surrounding us. Terry, you're on the Anakitos. Gabriel, I want you and Mike to trail Brandon. Ethan, you and Raphael stay here in case he comes back. Gavin and Caden get hotel duty. Remember, Brandon may not be alone. We believe that Troy and Weston have been working with him, and they may be in the area with him. He pulled me tighter against him. You men know where to find me. He looked around the room once more, then steered me out to the car, picking up a bag I hadn't noticed on our way out the door. In our hotel room, the adrenaline began to wear off, and I sat on the foot of the king-sized bed, shaking. It's all right. We're fine. Devin closed the drapes and set the air conditioner before pulling me to stand and wrapping his arms around me. I know. I buried my face against his shoulder, wishing he didn't still have his suit Oh, I don't know why I'm shaking like this. It's your body reacting to the adrenaline. It's normal. He ran his hands up and down my back. Come on. Let's get a little more comfortable. Then we can turn the shaking to something else if we try. He peeled my short jacket off my shoulders and arms, tossing it onto a nearby chair. I like this. He slipped one finger under the thin strap on one shoulder while bending to place a soft kiss on the other. He trailed his fingers over the bare skin of my arms and back. I couldn't resist running a line of kisses along the side of his neck with an occasional nip of teeth mixed in. Devin growled and nipped my shoulder with his own teeth. Sit. Let me take those boots off for you. I sat on the edge of the bed and let him lift one leg, ease the zipper down, and pull the boot off. He slid one hand down the length of my leg as he went, before doing the same with the other foot. He stood, pulling me to my feet as he went, and then kissed me again, with more strength and desire than the soft, lingering touch of his lips against my shoulder just moments earlier. His hand skimmed over the exposed skin at the top of my dress, sliding ever so lightly and teasing my senses. My dress loosened as he lowered the zipper and I waited, 
letting him undress me at his own pace. He broke the kiss and stepped back, slipping the thin straps off my shoulders so that my dress fell down my body, landing in a pool of satin and lace around my feet as he looked on. I enjoyed his reaction to me standing in my underthings, the matching bra and panties, the garter belt and hose. He blinked several times without otherwise moving, and I glanced down my body, making sure things were still where they were supposed to be. Is something wrong? I knew better. His head shook slowly, his eyes never left my body. No, not wrong. It's perfect, you are perfect. He took my arm and moved me to the edge of the bed, before he shrugged out of his suit coat and tossed it into the same chair where he'd put my jacket. He knelt in front of me, cupping both hands over my expanding belly. He placed a soft kiss there before looking up and meeting my eyes. You know how much you mean to me, don't you? I felt something open between us, something I'd only felt hints of before. Suddenly I could not only hear the thoughts he shared with me, but feel his emotions as well. I felt a wave of his love for me wash over me, the strength of it nearly overwhelming me, and I let my own emotions, my love for him, my faith in him, rise up in response. I wanted him to experience what I was feeling from him. Devin eased me backward a couple of inches, until I felt the bed against the back of my legs. He started at my ankles and skimmed his hands up my legs, pausing for a moment to play with the tops of my hose and the skin there, before teasing the exposed skin between the stockings and my underwear. I thought the underwear was supposed to go under the belt? He frowned, realizing that the panties were on top. I grinned. So did my sisters, but there's a reason to wear it this way. He lifted one brow. What's that? This. I pushed my panties off, letting them slide down my legs and puddle on the floor. I watched as his eyes followed the small piece of silk as it fell, and then slowly his eyes made their way back up, taking in how the hose and garters framed the core of my body. He smiled slowly. I can see the advantages. He ran his hands over the exposed skin between the belt and hose, nudging my legs apart leaving no part of me untouched, as he teased me with gentle fingers. I stood looking down at Devon on his knees in front of me. His eyes darkened with desire as he leaned forward and ran his tongue over my slit, my knees weakened and a soft whimper escaped my throat. Down. He pushed me back onto the bed. I sat, then fell back against the soft down comforter, lying still for only a second before pushing myself up on my elbows so I could watch him. He seemed mesmerized by the view the tan of my skin accented by the gold of my underthings. I smiled at the look on his face. Are you going to sit there all night? I was getting impatient. It's a view worth taking my time. He smirked at me a moment before moving. He gripped my legs and pulled me toward him until my ass sat on the edge of the bed, my knees spread wide. He ran the tips of his fingers over and over the edges of my hose, playing with the change in feel between the thin nylon and my skin. The sensation sent a shiver through my body, and he stopped. Are you cold? No, that tickles. He lifted one brow. Tickles, huh? How about this? He leaned over and ran his tongue along the edge of one stocking. Does that tickle? I groaned. No. He gave in and ran his hands up my legs, holding them wide as he bent forward and kissed the center of me. His tongue teased and probed as he drew the kiss out. I whimpered. My elbows slid from beneath me and I fell back against the bed. My hands gripped the fabric of the spread as the first wave of pleasure washed over me. Devin continued his sensual assault until the second wave came, more intense. Then he pulled away and stood looking down at my relaxed body. Feeling better? He unfastened his cuffs before unbuttoning his shirt. He shrugged out of it and tossed it on the chair with my jacket earlier. Much. I lay almost limp on the bed, only my eyes moving as I watched him undress. He kicked his shoes off near the door and draped his suit pants over the arm of the chair. He stopped when all he had on was his boxer briefs. He came back to where I still lay on the bed. Are you ready for more? His voice was husky as he bent over me. 
He braced his arms on either side of my head and lowered his mouth to mine. Always? I whispered against his lips an instant before they captured mine in a gentle barrage on my senses. I slid my hand up his hips where they hovered near mine, then over his back. I reveled in the easy way my fingers skidded over the taut muscles as I played them back and forth over his smooth skin. He pushed up, pulling away from the kiss. Come on. He took one hand and pulled me upright. Where? I asked my voice thick. Wherever I take you, once he had me on my feet, he finished undressing me. He unhooked my bra and let it slide down my arms while he tried to work the garters on my stockings. I took pity on him and showed him how to work the clasp, and he made quick work of the remaining three before rolling the hose down my legs. I braced myself on his shoulder and lifted my feet one at a time for him to slip them off. Finally, he moved behind me, unhooked the belt and added it to the growing pile of discarded clothing. Come on. He led me into the bathroom of our hotel room, where I discovered it had a large jacuzzi. It's been a long day, even before we tried to go home. I thought some time in the tub would help you relax. I thought you did a pretty good job of relaxing me already. I couldn't help but grin. That I did. He kissed the bend of my neck. If you don't want a bath, you don't have to. I just thought you would like one. I'd like one, but do I have to take it alone? No, baby, I'll climb in there with you if you'd like. I'd like. Why don't you start the water and climb in? I'll be right back. Okay. I agreed as he went back to the bedroom. After setting the water temperature warm but not too hot, I climbed into the slowly filling tub, laid back and let the water climb my body as it rose. I closed my eyes, enjoying the sensation, and wait for Devon to return. Nick. Devon's voice startled me. You know better than to sleep in the tub, especially with the water running. I didn't mean to, I just closed my eyes waiting for you. I didn't think you'd be very long. I guess I was more tired than I realized. I sat up and turned off the water. The tub hadn't overflowed, but there too much water for Devon to get in without making a mess. I lifted the plug to let out some of the water, replacing it after the water had dropped a couple of inches. I wanted enough room that the jets wouldn't send the water splashing all over the floor either. I looked up at him, expectant. Well, are you getting in? He grinned. Sure, slide forward. I scooted forward in the tub, activating the jets as he settled into the water behind me, easing me back until I leaned against his chest. The jets don't do me a lot of good like this. I teased. Do you want to move so you can get some on your back? No, I was just teasing, I'm good like this. Besides, it's not really my back that's tired tonight, it's my feet. I stretched them in front of me, holding each on in front of a different jet. I let the pressurized air hit the soles of my feet, massaging and tickling them at the same time. I relaxed against him and sighed, even with the tickling, my feet felt much better. Tell me what you're thinking, Devin's voice was soft. Not a whole lot, actually. I took a deep breath, inhaling his scent, and letting it fill me. I'm sure if I weren't so tired I would have a million things running through my head, but just now? I'm just glad we're together and safe, the wedding's over, and I won't have to do any more planning for it. I felt his chest vibrate as he chuckled. No more wedding planning. He lifted his left hand, so we could both see the ring I'd put there a few hours earlier. Where did you find this? I found it last week at work while looking for things for the store. I knew when I saw it that it was perfect for you. I took his hand in mine and twisted the ring on his finger. I know you won't be able to wear it all the time or even most of the time, but I thought you might like it for special occasions. I love it. I've been trying to decide exactly what to have done for my permanent ring. After seeing this, I think chain links would be perfect. Possibly with your initials and maybe today's date worked in somewhere. I turned to one side and tilted my head back to look up at him. I like that. I stretched up to place a soft kiss on his lips. 
I've been thinking about getting one done too. I mean, I love your grandmother's ring and I plan to wear it, but I thought it would be nice for us to have matching tattoos. He was quiet for a moment. If it's something you want to do, I like it, but don't feel like you need to just because I am. I know. I want to. But I don't think I'll have my initials put in the links, that's just too much. I ended with a haughty tone, making it obvious I was joking. Devin chuckled again, then kissed the top of my head. Are you sure you should do it now? Now? While pregnant. Maybe you should wait until after the baby is born to get a tattoo. That hadn't occurred to me. I'll check with Alexis before I do anything, okay? All right. We sat together in the bubbling water for a while, enjoying the feel of each other and the water moving around us, until the timer shut off the jets and the water started to cool. Come on, baby, let's go get in bed. Devin prompted me to move. I slid forward and opened the drain while he stood and stepped out of the tub. He grabbed a towel and quickly dried off before taking the second, helping me out of the tub and carefully drying me. I can do that. I watched him make sure he got every drop. I know you can, but I enjoy it. I let him finish, then pulled the pins that had kept my hair off my shoulders during the wedding and kept it dry while in the tub. Though it was must from the episode on the bed, the style had held up well. I dug out the last of the pins and curls tumbled around my shoulders and down my back. I shook my head and Devin rubbed his fingers against my scalp. Don't those pins hurt? Some. I shrugged. Then why wear them? Because it looked really good. You'll notice I don't wear pins often. It's a good thing too. I love when your hair's down and tumbling around your face. He stood behind me and wrapped his arms around my waist, meeting my eyes in the mirror. Are you ready for bed? I was so tired it was a struggle to keep my eyes open. I hadn't slept much the night before. I don't know if it was nerves, excitement, or simply not having Devin in bed beside me. We went back into the bedroom and I crawled in between the sheets, snuggling deep while I waited for Devin to finish turning out the lights and join me. When I felt the bed dip as he lay down, I reached for him. I curled against him, glad to have him beside me. I laid my head on his shoulder and closed my eyes. I lay still for a moment, breathing in Devin's scent and letting it push away the last of the stress of the day. I slid my hand across his chest, stopping when I felt my thumb flick across his nipple. I paused, rubbing my thumb back and forth a few times before letting my hand move on. I continued to explore his body with one hand, my head pillowed on his shoulder, for several moments. I teased him, sliding my hand lightly all over him, except the most sensitive spots. I ran my fingers up and down his legs, in circles over his stomach and down his sides, then up his chest and along the other side of his neck. Is this going somewhere or do you just find amusement in tormenting me? Devin asked. Both. Do you want me to participate or just let you do your thing? Both. I knew he couldn't see my playful smirk in the dark. Feeling impish tonight, huh? I didn't bother to respond, there was no need. Instead, I continued to play my fingers lightly over his skin, a touch here, a caress there, but he was through letting me run the show. I felt his muscles tense, getting ready to move, and the next thing I knew, he picked me up and moved me until I was laying on top of him. If the light had been on, I would have been staring him in the face. What was that for? So I can have as much access to you as you have to me. Ha, ah, now your front is covered by me and your back is covered by the bed, all I have is the sides while you have far more of me. But I need to make up for lost time lost time? His hands gripped my butt and pulled me firmly against him, his erect cock pressing into my belly. All that time you were touching me while I kept my hands to myself, trying to be a gentleman and let you sleep. Are you saying I'm not a gentleman? I did my best to sound indignant. He chuckled beneath me. I certainly hope not. 
His hand slid up my back, snaking back and forth to encounter as much of my skin as he could touch. A shiver ran through my body. Cold. No. I pushed myself down his body until I could take one nipple into my mouth. I swirled the tip of my tongue around the tiny button before taking a careful bite, just enough to make him even more sensitive. I moved over and treated the other nipple to the same. I was heading back to the first when Devon wrapped his hands around my upper arms, stopping me. No you don't. You're driving me to distraction. That's the point. Now it's my turn. He rolled, startling me enough to make me cling to him. He had known exactly what he was doing, and he laughed at my indignant squeal. He stopped when he was lying on top, pinning me against the bed beneath him. They're much better. This doesn't seem fair to me. Doesn't it? He didn't seem to care. Not at all. I never kept you from touching me, yet you're holding my arms down. I tried to reason. You're right, that's not fair at all. He let his hands slide down my arms until they reached my wrists, then lifted both arms until they met over my head. He pinned them to the bed with one hand. Hang on a second. I felt him stretch over me, still holding my hands. There. He said, having found whatever he was looking for. Something soft rubbed my wrists, I tipped my head back to look but I couldn't see anything in the pitch black of the room. What is that? Nothing you couldn't break if you wanted to, without hurting yourself. Do you want me to stop? No. Then does it matter what it is? Not really. No. He finished tying it was around my wrists and smoothed his hands down my arms. Goosebumps rose on my skin at the heightened sensitivity from the darkness and the extra awareness from not being able to touch him myself. That little bit of control taken away had made me more conscious of every touch I received. I heard the whisper of his hair brushing his shoulders as he moved over me and I wondered what he was doing next. He lifted himself off me and I felt the bed move as he changed position. Some sense, I wasn't sure what, told me he was beside me, not laying but sitting or kneeling in the dark. I waited in the silence, my impatience growing. I didn't have long to wait, he skimmed feather-light touches at random spots all over my body. A touch on the underside of my arm. Another along my side. A light kiss on the tip of one breast. A circle drawn on the inside of one thigh. The sharp scrape of his fingernails over my belly. I couldn't stop my body from twisting, moving against the sensations. I couldn't tell if it was trying to move into the tormenting touches or away from them. Devin continued to tease me for several minutes, and my movements became more frantic as I grew desperate for him to end the foreplay, to put an end to the torture. Please. I gasped for air. Please what? There was a light tone to his voice, and I knew he was enjoying my reaction. Do something. I was on the verge of begging. I am doing something, I'm teasing you. You're driving me out of my mind. Are you ready? He asked, dipped one hand between my legs for the first time since we'd gotten in the bed. His fingers found the slick heat leaking from me as they slid along my slit. Ooh, you are ready. His hands eased my knees apart, then a weight settled on the bed between them. I waited, anticipating some kind of touch, but I jumped when the first thing I felt was the damp heat of his tongue drawing swirls along my belly, moving up my body. He paused for a moment to pay attention to my sensitive breasts, before continuing up to my mouth. He captured my lips in a deep, hard kiss as I felt him push inside me. He established a swift rhythm and sent me over the edge into bliss twice before letting himself go as my body clenched around his. With a sharp tug, he released my hands before rolling to my side. I turned onto my side and curled against him again. He wrapped his arm around me, holding me close. I let out a contented sigh and whispered, I love you, baby. <laughs>